Hello everyone, we are back with another Unity tutorial and in this part we're going to be doing some uh, sort of boring things and at the end we're going to do some more exciting things. The first thing that we need to do, which is going to be the boring stuff, is make a boundary for our bullets. Because as we saw last time, our bullets just keep going and they fill up our scene, which we don't want because that takes up resources. So we're going to go to Create, 3D Object, Cube. And then we're going to reset this cube's transformations uh, so that it's at the center. And we're going to scale it up. So we're going to take this to a scale of 10. We're going to take this to a scale of 20 along the z-axis. And then we're going to, what we're going to do next is we're going to get rid of this mesh renderer. So we can't see that in our game view. Now the reason I've done this is to create a little boundary, or a big boundary, around our game space. What we want to do is select is trigger for this and basically what this boundary is going to be is it's going to be our kill box for the bullets that we fire. So what we need to do to be able to actually have that happen is we need to add a component. So let's go to add component, new script and then we're going to call this kill box and then go create and add. Okay, so now we're over here in Mono Develop, and what we want to do is just get rid of that sample code. And basically, what I'm going to do is just paste in the code because it's very simple. And um, I put it together before from different things that I got from different areas. Um, and we're just going to talk about it for a quick second. So, this is our code, uh, everything is set correctly. And basically, what it says is void on trigger exit, um, collider, other, destroy, other dot game object dot transform dot parent dot game object. And without getting too technical into things, when our bullets leave the view of the camera, they're going to hit the boundary, of course, because that sits outside of the view of the camera. And as they hit that boundary, they're going to trigger something. And as that trigger happens, they're going to be deleted from our game. So now that we're happy with our code, just take a look at that, so you can uh, copy that real quick. We're going to go file, save, and then return back to our game. And now we're playing our game, and we can see something really interesting just in that hierarchy tab. We see that our game isn't being filled up with a bunch of shots. Each shot is getting deleted, and if you can actually see that little flicker, it says deleted game object. So, we've got that sorted, and now our resources aren't going to be depleted. And it looks pretty good. It looks like we're doing the right thing, and everything's working properly. Now, for the exciting part. So, we're just going to deselect that, and we're going to create another cube. And we're going to position that where we want it. So, if our... So if our player object is at a position minus 5, let's take our cube to a position uh, positive 5. There we go. And scale them down just to the size of our player. Now we can make this cube look a little uh, more exciting as we've done before. We just create a material and uh, for this I've just created a material and just changed the albedo value. So if you create a material as we did before, um, just leave it everything as it is but just change the albedo value here and you'll be able to change it to whatever colour you like. And I'm going to drag that over to cube 1 which we're going to call uh, Nemesis or something and I can't spell that alright now this is going to be our enemy now to make this our enemy what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to add a component and uh, to do that we just you know add component new script and let's call this uh, enemy yeah let's just call it enemy movement or something uh, there we go Make sure it's C sharp and then go to create and add. Okay, so now that we're in mono develop, let me explain something with how we're going to make the code for our enemy mover. 
So as you can see here, I've already got the code up and I was testing it before just to make sure that everything worked. Now you can see that this is very complicated right now, but I'll do things step by step. Uh, uh, it might be a little jittery, but I'm going to do things step by step and explain things as best I can. There may be some things that elude me, but just trust me, I've tested out this code and it will work and give you the results that you need. If you want to learn more about this code, I'll leave a uh, sort of I'll leave something in the description just to tell you where I got some of this information from. And um, yeah, let's just get started. So as you can see here, we've got a bunch of public classes because this is going to be quite a complicated piece of work. Uh, we've got a public transform, which are going to be our waypoints, and we are able to set how many waypoints we want. Now the purpose of our waypoints is going to be to have our enemy move from one destination to another destination to another destination and we're going to make that movement loop. Now we've got a public float speed and I'm sure we're all um, used to that. We've got a public integer uh, current waypoint. We've got a public boolean statement. Patrol equals true. We've got a public vector 3. Got, uh, we've got actually three public vector threes and we won't go too much into messing around with these but I'll just keep them in just to make sure I don't mess around with the code too much. So this is the next section of code that you're going to want to input. There's not really much for me to say here because it does get quite complicated but we're just going to recognize similar lines like velocity and um, this is basically if a certain statement is true from my understanding, if a certain statement is true, we're going to bridge the gap. Uh, the distance is going to be closed by our enemy moving to a transform position, which is going to be dictated by the waypoints that we set. So these are the new lines that I've pasted over from my testing code, just to continue what we're doing here. And there's uh, quite a few else statements, so that we have different things happening for uh, different circumstances. And then from here we see that we've got another get component rigid body dot velocity line to give us the velocity that we need. And here we've just got a little bit of fun that I found from the uh, Unity website, which is going to be something interesting. Make sure you uh, put this line of code in so that you you know experience the joy that we're about to experience. Now, just so everyone has a good idea of uh, the code, I'm just going to leave it on the screen for a little bit just pause at your leisure. So this is what our code should look like once we're done with it. So I'll just leave this on the screen so you can copy it up. And then once you're done here, we'll just return back to Unity. So we'll just hit save and then we can go. Okay, after experiencing a couple of technical hiccups from Unity, we're back with our code. I trust this the most, this uh, enemy move test, because I think there's a little bit of a complication in the one that I just created. So just take a good look at this uh, code, pause the video at this point if you want to uh, copy this code. And I'll just scroll down now. And then once you're done, we can return to Unity. So we're gonna hit File, Save, and then go back to Unity. Now it doesn't look like we've got any problems in our game. And as we can see, uh, the little fun trick that I was talking about is the fact that our uh, cube friend here actually moves and if we bump into him uh, we actually get thrown around a little bit which is something that we'll have to fix later but anyway the next thing that we want to do is to set some waypoints so we're going to go to the size of the waypoints and just as an example I'm going to set three and we're going to create not cubes this time just spheres I'm going to put that we're going to put those in our uh, game right now. Scale these down a little bit. So let's go to the transform menus and just put them at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5. And then I'll just duplicate this. So control D, control D again, and just drag these two random points in our game. Let's see if those are actually in the game again. There we go. 
Now what we want to do is we want to go back to Nemesis and we, we want to drag these uh, sphere components into element 1, 2, uh, element 0, 1 and 2. And these are going to be our waypoints because our object is going to want to make its way over to these individual points and it's going to do so in a loop. Now one thing that we want to do is uh, we want to go back to our components and to make sure just make sure that they're not uh, set as triggers. That should be good. Now let's play and see what happens. Of course nothing is happening right now because we forgot one significant thing which was to up the speed of our um, enemy. So let's put them at speed 10 or something just to see and let's begin. And as you can see there, our enemy is moving around quite fast actually. So let's change that speed down to about 5. And then if we just uh, get rid of the mesh renderers on our spheres, we can make things look a little better. And there we have it for now. Our enemy is moving, they are rotating. And we've also set up a boundary for our game so that our bullets and our enemy bullets will not flood the hierarchy and take up all our resources. Thank you, that has been another press any button tutorial. If you guys like that then leave a like, if you have something to say then leave a comment. More videos on the way and they're going to get pretty exciting because we're going to be messing around with enemy stuff and creating some shots for our enemy to shoot at us. So, I will be back another time.